it's not just the information sharing process that is important, right? So this deficit model that we tend to use very much is I have the information, I'm going to share it with you, therefore you'll be a little bit smarter later. And when I get more information, I'll share it with you, but there's zero opportunity for you to share your information with me. And that is a major problem. One reason that's a problem is because you can see here from some of this work that's been done is that it does not emotionally engage somebody this way. So it might be short-term information gained, but over the long term, it's not gonna matter to you that much. So looking for emotional connections, engagement opportunities, um, seem to bode very well with this trend in participatory research, also known as crowd science or citizen science. We have this whole do-it-yourself community, these maker people who make the most wonderful things, incredibly creative, but it tends to be kind of things that are never applied to anything outside of their garage, their environment there. So what I wanted to do is a very close cousin from a psychodemographic standpoint. Those people who feel like, okay, I don't have an engineering degree, but I feel pretty confident that I can do X, Y, and Z. That's kind of in line with a citizen scientist. Once you get people comfortable with the idea, letting them know that they really are valued and they're needed for some of this stuff. Once they get their feet wet with these projects, it goes on and it goes on and it goes on. So what we wanted to try to do is say to the makers, you are making things that actually can be applied for these research projects. For example, there's a uh, citizen science project out of, I wanna say it's NC North Carolina State, but I'm not entirely positive. It's somewhere down there where they ask people to swab their belly buttons for microbes and they test this. They also ask people to swab their homes for microbes and send all this into them and they're doing analysis that way. Well, they realize like, gosh, it would be a lot better for us if we had some cheap way to get other information from the, those homes. Climate data loggers in particular, they're expensive. And so this was a huge barrier to entry. It's a do-it-yourself community. When we partnered up with Instructables, we said, can you create a cheap climate data logger that can be used in these homes so that more information can be shared along with the microbes that are being sent? And that's what they're working on. So we have a challenge and we have prizes and incentives set up that way to bridge these two communities. Science cheerleaders are current and former NFL and NBA cheerleaders who are also scientists and engineers. Believe it or not, there's more than 250 that are actively engaged in science cheerleader. 250 of these women who volunteer their time to go around, they talk to young girls in particular, three million little cheerleaders in the United States, they have the potential to make a real impact and they you know, encourage them not to fall into society's stereotypes of what it means to be a female uh, scientist or engineer or what it means to be a cheerleader. While we're doing these appearances, we also weave into the parents mentality as well that even without their science degree, they're needed in science. And that's our introduction to some of the citizen science opportunities. In fact, every single appearance that a science cheerleader does, she shines a light on a local citizen science opportunity for people to get involved in. 